So first of all, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending to this talk. Good morning. Um, my name is Antoine Jacouteau, and I'm going to talk about uh, our RCD implementation on OpenBSD today. I uh, just want to apologize if I have a weird voice from time to time. I've uh, got a cold for a couple of days, so if it's weird, that's, that would be why. Or maybe it's because I mentioned systemd. I also make some weird stuff in my voice. Anyway, a um, little bit about myself. I've been an OpenBSD developer for about a decade now. Uh, I'm uh, known as Aja Couto or AJA for the uh, lazy ones. Uh, I work mostly uh, on things that make my life easier when I put OpenBSD in the real world. So I'm more on the sysadmin engineering side of thing more than a, than a regular developer. Uh, so these are some of the things that I've done. Uh, maintain way too many ports, uh, amongst them the uh, GNOME desktop, uh, for which I'm a uh, foundation member, and I maintain the uh, French OpenBSD uh, mirror. I just want to say a quick thank you to my uh, fellow developer uh, who I developed the RCD system with, uh, Robert Nagy and Ingo Schwartzy. Uh, Robert and I came up with the original implementation and Ingo uh, gave us a tremendous help uh, in actually having a good shell foo. Uh, so the stuff we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, historical and current boot process uh, of OpenBSD. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the alternative that we looked at when we first started the implementation how to use RCD, uh, the internals uh, of RCD, and um, I will introduce a small tool called RC Control, uh, which, is used, which is a high level tool to, uh, to handle all the RC configuration uh, and demons. So on and all, we'll see if uh, RCD had any implication on the traditional uh, system that we used before it. Just a word of advice, a disclaimer. Um, if you guys come up for a highly technical talk, then uh, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. RCD on OpenBSD is just one very, very tiny, small shell script. Uh, so it's not really interesting by itself. Uh, what's interesting is the story behind it and what it does. So. Um, that was the trigger why uh, I got fed up about and wanted to uh, create something that was a way to handle demon in a generic way. A few years ago, before RCD, um, I was working at uh, deploying OpenBSD-based infrastructure a bit all over the world, and especially in an area where Unix or Linux knowledge was very low, let alone BSD. And I just got tired uh, because the weekend on this region are not the same. I got tired to be woken up on Sundays at 6 a.m. Uh, by my ticket system, sending an SMS that someone wanted to reload something and was not able to or wanted to start something and couldn't find etc in it D. So yeah, that's, that, that was the trigger for it. Um, of course, the main reason uh, after that that we wanted a generic way to handle services and demons was because we were using a lot of automation tools. So automatically enabling services or starting services, if you don't have a generic interface, is very hard. You really don't want to have a huge amount of Ruby code editing your RC conf local or anything. So yeah. So. Um, the way OpenBSD uh, boots hasn't changed much since its initial inception. Uh, it's actually pretty much how it still boots now. Um, in a very general way, you have the bootloader that will fire up the kernel, and the kernel will run etcrc using sh. Um, so yes, it's old, but it's still very dependable. Uh, it's predictive, it's sequential, there is no service dependencies, etc. Um, basically, what it does is that it's a big uh, RC script that runs things sequentially. To be able to control what we want or do not want to start, uh, we have two configuration files uh, the etc rc conf, which contains the um, 
operating system default configuration. And we have etc rcconf local where you can put the overrides uh, compared to rcconf. The way that we start a daemon or a service, um, okay, um, I'm gonna explain what we mean by daemon or service in RC. Um, for us, a daemon is the regular daemon that will fire up, fork, and run in the background. While a service is more like a kernel facility, like I wanna start PF, or I wanna enable the counting, et cetera. Uh, anything that is not basically running a daemon. So to start a daemon, um, you edit your RC conf local and just put the uh, daemon name underscore flags equals. If you don't say, if you say anything but no, then the daemon will be enabled. Um, and service is just just a yes no. So that's how it works. Uh, it worked before RCD, and that is how it also works now. So nothing changed uh, in that regard. So the requirement, uh, as I said, nothing changed and nothing needed to change. Um, we knew that convincing uh, the OpenBSD crowd to have an RCD system would be quite challenging. So we didn't want to disrupt anything, really. Um, actually, we even lied a bit. Uh, I will <laughs> talk about that a bit later. So, yeah. So the current parroting couldn't change. We have to preserve the existing behavior. So basically what we did is that we plug on our, our RCD system on top of the uh, traditional uh, ATC RC uh, initialization. Um, there is one important thing, is that we only wanted our RCD to handle daemons. Uh, we did not want to handle like starting a network or mounting file system or things like that. These were completely out of scope uh, from the very beginning. And of course, we wanted something small, simple, uh, robust, uh, because as I said, I'm not a developer, I'm stupid, so I'm only able to do very simple things. And of course, easily debuggable. So at the time, uh, we started to look at a different alternative, not all RCD-based, uh, but at least uh, initi initialization-based. Um, yeah, well, you don't see systemd here. Uh, he, the reason is not that obvious, it's that at, at the time, uh, systemd was actually in its infancy. I think, I'm not sure they even had a, a release yet. Uh, and anyway, we, we're not looking to, to replace any decron, uh, syslog, and what else. So we had a quick look at, at the SMH, uh, SMF uh, from Solaris and Illumos and LaunchD from macOS. Uh, these are actually very nice, but very complex system. Um, it was way too complex for me, I'm stupid. Um, but it was nice to have a look at it. Uh, they, actually, they actually fixed some real world problem, but these were out of scope for what we wanted to do. Um, then we had a deep look at OpenRC, which is actually a quite sane uh, RCD implementation on Linux. Uh, that's the one but that's used by uh, Gentoo Linux and Alpine, if I remember correctly. Uh, the problem is that it, it was way, way, way different that, than how things were done on OpenBSD. Uh, of, of course, it handled a mounting file system, setting TTYs and blah, blah, blah. So all that thing that we didn't want to do. Uh, the init script were kind of too big for what we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to try to have init script that were really, really small. Uh, and it introduced a whole bunch of new commands, which was something that we really didn't want to, didn't want to have. Um, and then I had a quick look at the run it and daemon tools. Uh, daemon tools felt just too weird to me. And run it was nice, but it was a little bit like OpenRC uh, introducing way too many commands. Um, one of the most interesting uh, Linux RCD implementation was the one from Slackware. Um, but this one was actually too static for our needs. Um, it works basically the same way uh, OpenBSD used to work. Uh, you have a big etc rc.m that will run sequentially the, uh, the init script that, uh, that you give it. The problem is that if you, I don't know, install the package that installed an init script, then you have to manually add uh, that to rc.m or rc.local or whatever. Uh, and there is no factorization uh, between the rc scripts, so they're all huge. 
And of course, the obvious cho uh, choice would have been uh, FreeBSD or, and NetBSD RCD and RC order. Um, that is actually what we initially uh, wanted to bring into OpenBSD. Uh, so we looked at it. Uh, the reason we didn't go for it um, is that there was a lot of small differences uh, in the way we were doing things. Like enabling a daemon was daemon underscore enable equals yes. Uh, that's something we didn't do. That's something we didn't want to do because, again, it was forbidden, forbidden to change anything. Um, it was also used, it's also used to, uh, to, uh, to do other stuff than just handle daemons. Um, and RC order uh, provided um, dynamic uh, startup of the script, I mean, dependency. Um, that's something we didn't want to have either. Um, so basically, if we had gone from, for the uh, FreeBSD and NetBSD RCD, it would have meant that we would have to strip it quite a bit, so it was not really worth it. Uh, so that's the reason we just uh, went for, uh, for our own implementation. Um, I really want to en enhance the fact that we did not want to uh, start from scratch. Uh, it just happened because we couldn't find something that uh, was good for our needs. So really, it's not a non implemented here syndrome. It's, it's really, really we looked at, at a lot of uh, different way to do it. Um, so on and on, uh, we started uh, with something small uh, that needed to be uh, targeted to uh, the OS requirement. Uh, we didn't want to create a process uh, supervisor. Uh, that is not the goal of RCD from our point of view. Uh, process supervisors are great. There, there is some great uh, a real use case for that, uh, but it was not uh, in the scope of RCD. So no crazy stuff like even driven or socket activated daemons or things like that. No parallelization either. Um, we don't really care about the boot time of the machine. Um, in these days of an age, uh, you have half of your machines are VM on the cloud somewhere. Uh, these boot super fast, uh, whether you have parallelize uh, in it or whatever. And otherwise, you just run on bare metal and then you have to uh, wait 15 minutes for the post to finish anyway. So. And as I mentioned, no uh, automatic startup uh, ordering. Um, the reason we didn't want to have uh, service dependencies and, and automatic ordering is that it introduced a complexity and that was not really, in our point of view, necessary. Um, when I put a system in production, uh, I usually put a system in production that does one or couple or two things. Uh, I'm not expecting to put something that will run 20 different services, so I don't need to, to actually order things uh, for 20 different daemons. So basically, manually adding two scripts uh, in the order that you want to run them was enough, enough for us. So the initial landing, uh, initial implementation was done in October 2010. Um, so it consisted of uh, etc, uh, rcd, rc.subber, uh, which contained all the uh, basic functions to the rcd framework. And of course, uh, the rcd uh, script uh, coming from packages only. At that time, and that's where we lied, <laughs> we said that it was designed for ports only. That was the only way that we could actually bring something into the base system uh, without being knocked out. So of course, base was the, uh, the ultimate goal, but we had to come up with a good proof of concept that what we had developed was actually useful and um, well done. So um, as I mentioned, I am not a developer, so I didn't want to create a b whole bunch of new commands to handle daemons, so we basically kept using the tool that we were already using manually. So namely, uh, kill or pkill or pgrep, et cetera. Uh, the traditional tool that are already there to, uh, to, um, to manage uh, processes. Uh, we did not want to rely on PID files. Um, because while you, have, you always have the chance to have like a dangling PID file uh, here or there, or um, you have also a race with a PID file, or when you up a daemon, it can change the PID, so if you have to handle that and things like that. So 
it was it was not really uh, I mean we didn't want to go uh, that way uh, so as I mentioned no start stop daemon or anything that would actually run the daemon for you uh, and as long as 95% of the ecosystem would be properly handled by RCD, well, that was good enough for us. Uh, for the gigantic, weird application that needs all kinds of stuff to properly start or stop, then it's just better uh, to write, uh, to write a, a own script for that. And for better or worse, uh, we did it in shell uh, because the entire init system was already in shell. So. So at that time, um, the RCD script were uh, called from RC local. Uh, RC local is uh, a file that is typically um, modified by the admin of the machine, so it has nothing to do with the base system, and that's where you traditionally used to manually add the daemon that you wanted to start. Um, so it looks like a good fit to actually start the RCD script from there. And that's basically the only amount of code uh, that we added to this file, which is completely stupid. It's just a while loop. And, uh, and if, if there is a script and it's, it's executable, then, uh, then you just start it. So it was really, really small. It couldn't do a lot more than stop, start, reload. But that was, uh, that was uh, enough for, uh, for a good proof of concept. Um, so at the time, rc.subber, which uh, provide all subroutines to RCD, um, was 54 line of shell code. So to my point of view, that's pretty small. When I committed it, when we committed it, then we got this kind of answer. So that's what I mentioned earlier. We knew it would be a challenge. 54 line of shell code as a bloated interface. Of course, we also had very uh, nice review from people actually using OpenBSD in the real world and really needed uh, some kind of RCD uh, system. So yeah, that was amusing, but that actually proved that we were right to be very, very cautious. And one release after that, uh, we were allowed to handle base system demons. Yay! So. Um, why did everyone change its mind about uh, moving RCD to base and not just handling ports daemon? Not everyone, a lot of us thought that the ports people Yeah, 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 okay, that's true. But I'm a liar, I said so already. <laughs> so the main reason was that uh, the processes were not st started in isolation. Basically they inherited all whatever ETC RC was doing before all the environment, all the stuff. So that was very bad, and of course, that can lead to uh, unexpected uh, things. And in RCD, we're using SU uh, for uh, environment sanitation. Um, to give you an example of uh, how it used to work, uh, if you run the, the first command versus, versus the second one, uh, the first command will output this in your PHP info. So that is a lot of information I don't want to see in my web server. Uh, if, if you're like some people who also love to export uh, like AWS private keys in their environment, then they will appear there as well. So yeah, that's what basically convinced uh, all the, uh, the rest of the OpenBSD crowd to, uh, to go for RCD. Um, a little word about the, uh, the startup sequence. I've been talking about ETC RC uh, all the time, so let's see a little bit uh, what it does exactly, uh, and let's see where RCD is actually used uh, uh, within that script. Um, so ETC RC basically um, enable your swap at boot time. Uh, it will run FSCK on the file system. It will mount your uh, root directory, set up TTY flags, keyboard encoding, blah, blah, blah. I will start the network. Uh, network is not handled by RCD. It's a script on itself called etc net start. Um, and then in the middle of the script, then RCD will uh, start uh, starting daemons. Um, the, what we call the early daemons, like uh, syslogd, pflog, and tpd. Um, then it will run the, uh, the 
RPC uh, daemon, uh, port map, YP, blah, blah, blah. And then we're back to doing some sequential stuff like enabling quotas, or cleaning TMP, setting up the default secure level, blah, blah, blah. And then RCD again uh, is back to start uh, all the rest of the daemon, like SSH, uh, RelayD, DHCP, uh, all that stuff. So basically RCD in itself is a very, very small subset uh, of the uh, boot sequence. What it is today, uh, it's still small. RC.server is only 224 line of shell code. Um, we were able to remove 150 line of code from ETCRC itself. Um, the only small code that we had to add to it was uh, just sourcing RC server to get the, the functions. Uh, we created a very small function called start daemon, and that's what ETCRC will use to start the, uh, the RC script. Basically, you pass it all the RC script that you want to run, and if the script is actually enabled in RCConf, then it will start it. If not, then it will not do anything. And we have a small while loop to uh, also uh, start the uh, package script. Um, I will talk about that a bit later because uh, there's a different way between starting the base system daemons and the, uh, the uh, external packages uh, RCD script. So on and on, it was a big feature gain for uh, only 70 line of shell code. So how was it used? Um, it's worked tried to kept, keep it very simple. Uh, we have four plus one action available. Uh, well, we have five actions, but the restart action really is start and stop. So, so we have a start, obviously. We will start your daemon according to your configuration with the flags you pass it. Uh, it can run as a different user under a different login class, et cetera. Uh, we have the stop action, which uh, basically sends a sick term to the daemon. Uh, reload will send a sig up. And uh, we have the check action, which will pig web for the process and uh, tell you whether it's running or not. Um, these are the very basic. We'll see exactly in details how it's done. Because um, matching demons uh, is kind of hard. Um, so all of these actions, they need to be run as a privileged user, except for the check action. Um, although it can happen that the check action also need privilege uh, right. Uh, we'll see about that a bit later. Um, all these actions are fully configurable and overridable. These are only default. Like when I say the stop action, send a sick term to the process, you can completely override that in the RCD script itself. Uh, same thing for the reload action, because uh, kill minus up doesn't always do what you think it does. Uh, and since it was the main user interface, we really tried to uh, keep as less action as possible. So we didn't want to do like force, start, or whatever. So that's how a minimal RCD script looks like. Uh, you have the shebang and then the, uh, the uh, daemon variable, which is the only uh, mandatory variable, which is a path to the daemon you want to run. Then we are sourcing rc.subber, and we are passing it uh, whatever action we want, start, stop, or whatever. It is small, but it is actually, I would say, like one, one half of uh, the RCD script in OpenBSD are just like that. So that's, that's enough for most of the stuff. Of course, for packages, it's a bit different because we have some weird stuff in there. Um, alongside the actions, we have two optional flags that we can pass, uh, minus D for debug mode. By default, RCD will uh, redirect to dev null uh, the output of the script. So in minor D mode, it will, uh, it will output everything uh, on the console. Uh, and we have minus F, which is uh, similar to one start or four start, or um, I don't remember which one. I mean, it's used to, to start a daemon when that particular daemon is not enabled. It's an op for uh, the daemon coming from the package script. The reason for that is that um, for all base system daemons, we already have default in rcconf that are set to no or that are set to whatever uh, because by default this daemon must run. But the system has no knowledge of a default configuration for a package script because a package script is just an rcd script that's installed under, uh, under etc rcd. So if you run etc rcd my package script start, it will start because there is no default set to no. 
So it's only used for, for forcing a start of uh, base system daemons. Um, so the way we enable daemons uh, are the traditional way uh, for the base system daemons. So that didn't change. It's just uh, foobar underscore flags. Um, for the package script, we also use foobar underscore flags to actually append flags to the daemon we want to start. But to actually start a daemon, so to tell the OS that we want to start that daemon, we have to append it to a variable called package script, which is located in uh, rc.conf. Um, all the, the scripts that are listed in the package script variable will be run in order on start and a reverse order uh, on stop. So we have uh, several uh, RCD variables available in uh, RCD script. Uh, all these variables can be uh, overridden in RCConf local. We have, uh, first one is the daemon class. Um, which is the BSD login class that the daemon will run under. Uh, it'll default to daemon, uh, which is a pre-existing class in login.conf on OpenBSD. Uh, that's pretty convenient. When we started working on RCD, we wanted to find a nice way to increase like the niceness or inject environment variable in the process or thing like that. And so at first we were thinking about putting like, I don't know, daemon underscore nice, daemon underscore and and stuff like that. And we just realized what we actually had a facility for that. Login.conf is perfect. The, the daemons are starting with SU and SU can pass a, a BSD login class um, to the process that it will run. So nothing to develop here, it was already there. So the well-known now uh, daemon flags, uh, which default to no uh, or empty uh, in rcconf. Um, so these are the flags that uh, you want to pass uh, to your uh, daemon uh, on startup. So I don't know, minus F, etc, blah, blah, blah. Um, Then we have a daemon R table, uh, which allows to run the daemon in a particular uh, routing uh, domain. Um, the routing domain, routing table is, uh, allows multiple lookup table for, for routes and it's usually used for policy-based routing. Uh, I'm not a network guy, so. It <laughs> then we have a daemon timeout. Um, we realized at the very beginning of RCD that if you make a typo in your daemon, in your daemon flag, like for example, you forget to, push, to, to pass the minus D to demonize the daemon, uh, then you can fuck up your startup sequence quite badly. Uh, so we introduced a, a default timeout. Uh, if the process hasn't returned anything after 30 seconds, then we consider it failed and then we, we, uh, we keep, uh, we put it in the background and keep running. Um, it's also used for the opposite. Uh, there's quite a few processes uh, like Squid or MySQL or when you have a huge database that can take actually a long time to stop, uh, especially Squid actually on OpenBSD. So sometimes when you want to properly stop the daemon that you may need to increase uh, that, uh, that timeout. Otherwise it will be a forced kill. And the last variable we have is the daemon user. Um, so it defaults to root. Um, and that's the user that the daemon will run under. Uh, so that is what SU will use um, uh, as a user. So all these variables, um, they are uh, overridable, obviously, by the RCD script itself, which usually contains the default for that particular daemon. It is overridable by rcconf, which is the default OS configuration, and it is overridable by ETC rcconf local, um, which is the uh, locally modified um, uh, configuration. Um, the way that you override um, a particular variable, so here as an example for flags, is that instead of having daemon flags equal, you substitute the daemon part with the RCD script name. So, the first line here, daemon flags, is uh, what's under the uh, netsn mpd uh, rcd script. So by default, it will start with minus u, blah, blah, blah. 
If you want to please Henning and remove IPv6 support, uh, then you edit rcconf local and uh, you drop the uh, IPv6 and minus A's for, I don't know, logging support or I don't remember. So that's the way to override uh, any variable. Underscore class, underscore, underscore flags, underscore users, etc. Actually, I lied again. Yeah. Yes. The way you override the daemon class is a bit different. Uh, here, we'll not be using uh, environment variable. RCD will automatically check if there is a login class that has the same name of, as your RCD script. So if you have a login class that's called SSHD, for example, uh, or NetSNMPD in that, uh, that example, it will use that from login.conf. If, no, if there is no uh, matching, then it will fall back to the default uh, login class, which is uh, daemon. So that was uh, yeah, a simple way to, uh, to, to add the, uh, the, the login, BSD login class support. So here's an example of an rcconf local. So apmd flags equal minus a. apmd uh, being a base system uh, daemon means that we will be starting it with minus a. We will be starting hot plug with no flags. And we'll pass some flags to the sandd daemon. But sandd is a, an external package. So just putting that line here will not start it. You, we have to put it in here as well, in the package script variable. And that's how the system knows that it has to run that script. And we don't want to run NTPD for whatever reason. Why? Yes. <laughs> it's bloated. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there are also a few special cases that we have to uh, take into consideration. Um, we have a notion of what we call meta RCD script. Um, those aren't really RCD script, they're just regular shell script that basically run other RCD script in the order uh, that you pass them. It's used typically for, yeah, like Samba, you can, you, you can start SMBD and NMBD, uh, but there are also applications like, like Bacula where you want to run the director and the client on the same machine and et cetera, or so, there's a Rafa group where which has like seven or eight different demons. You don't want to have to enter all of them. Uh, you just have a meta script that will run all them in the sequence. Um, another special case, and this one is hard, is having uh, multiple instances of the same daemon. Um, it works most of the time, uh, but it depends on a lot of different uh, details. The way you do it, we do it right now is that we link the original RCD script and we rename it to something. Uh, the reason we're linking and not copying is that package script are part of the base system, so if they get updated, then at least uh, your link will be updated as well. Sorry? Um, so that works for most of the daemon, but there's a lot of uh, package out there that change their process, like using set proc title or stuff like that. Uh, and then it's very hard to actually match the correct one in the process list. Uh, if a daemon change, uh, like some sample, you pass foo bar minus, minus VEP, blah, 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 foo, foo, and sec proc title to just foo bar, then if you start two of those, there is no way that the RCD will know which one uh, it has to stop. Um, that's because, again, we're not a process supervisor. So that's a drawback of the implementation. Sorry? No. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm actually going to talk about that in a few. Um, so let's have a look now at the uh, the internal um, of RCD. So rc.subber, uh, that's the entry point of the whole framework. That's where we define the uh, the default function that will be used by all RCD script. All these functions can be overridden uh, by the RCD script, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't want to send a hub to reload your process, but because that doesn't work and needs some other procedure, then that's where you're gonna do it in the RCD script. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so the first function that rc.subber provides is rc underscore start. 
uh, what it does, it does RC exec, daemon, daemon flags, and the uh, BG variable. RC exec uh, can be two things. Um, it's basically the SU line uh, where you pass it your daemon class, uh, then the shell, and the, the user you want to run uh, the command as, and then the command itself. If we define a different uh, uh, routing table, uh, then we prepend a call to root minus T uh, before running um, the SU line. RCBG is a small variable. Uh, if you set that to yes, then it appends an offersend. That's for demons that uh, are not able to fork themselves uh, into the background. Uh, there's actually quite a lot around there, and I don't think systemd will help with that. So that's an example of how uh, SSHD um, is called on, uh, on, by RCD. We have RC stop, uh, which by default will run pkill uh, against the uh, daemon root table on the PEXP. Uh, when you use minus XF, because we want to match the entire process and arguments and match exactly that. Uh, the PXP uh, is the important part here. PXP is what we use to actually match the process that we want to handle. Uh, by default, it's set to the daemon variable, so the path to the daemon. And if there are daemon flags, then space and the daemon flags. So that's how, by default, uh, we match daemons that we want to handle. Um, one little thing that I want to mention is that at shutdown, uh, the base system daemon script are not uh, handled by RCD. They're just being sent to sick term uh, because all the base system daemons on OpenBSD are supposed to behave properly uh, when you send them to sick term. So there is no need to do any specific shutdown procedure. Then we have RC reload, which by default will send a hop uh, to the process, so the PEXP. So uh, that function is responsible for reloading a daemon. On OpenBSD, uh, reloading for us means reconfigure yourself. If minus hub does something else, like just reload but without reconfiguring or does any other crazy stuff, then we consider that it's not a reload and we disable that function. We'll see how uh, a bit later. And then we have RC check, which is uh, just a pgrep against the, uh, the uh, PEXP, so the process list. Uh, it returns a code of zero when the, uh, the daemon's running and one when it's not. Then we have a few op optional functions. Uh, RC pre. Uh, RC pre will be run by the start action, but before running uh, RC start. Um, Typically, it's used to create like non-privileged uh, owned directory to store whatever uh, socket file or things like that. Um, and we have the opposite. We also have an RC post, which is run by the stop action uh, after RC stop. Uh, that's typically used when a daemon uh, does, is not able to properly terminate itself and leaves a whole kind of uh, stupid files around or for example, uh, putting the system back into a pristine state, like COPS is a good example. When you start COPS, uh, it will actually move away the traditional LPD uh, command that you have in your path and replace them with uh, the COPS ones. So of course, on stop, it will do the opposite. It will put back the, uh, the original uh, LPD commands. And the last uh, function that the uh, rc.subber pro provides is the rc command, so that's the main entry point where you actually pass the start, stop, reload, et cetera, uh, action. And that is and must be the last command that an RC script uh, will call. So let's see how this command works. Um, when you pass the start action to RC command, uh, first it will check that the daemon is enabled. So it will basically run RC check. Uh, it will check if it's not already running, uh, it will run RC pre, it will run RC start, and then it will put all the daemon variable under uh, this directory for an RCD uh, RC script name. I'm gonna talk about that uh, in five minutes. Uh, there is a reason we're doing that, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and then of course it will, it will wait up to, uh, to the uh, timeout 
uh, seconds to make sure that the daemon is properly started. Uh, RC command stop. So uh, RC check to check that the daemon is running. Then we run RC stop. Then we wait up uh, to the timeout again. Then we run RC post. And then we remove the file that we created with, uh, with RC start uh, in var run RCD. And restart is, as I said, just foobar stop and foobar start. And the RC command reload, uh, so we check that the daemon is running, and if it is running, then we run RC reload on it. And RC command check is just running RC check. So nothing really interesting here. So as I mentioned, there are some, uh, some action that uh, some daemon cannot uh, handle. Uh, so a good example is reload. There are a lot of daemon that are not able to reload themselves. They have to, to stop first and start um, or restart. Uh, so in this situation, what we do is that we uh, transform, well, I mean, we use a function name that we put into a variable and set it to no. So if your daemon cannot reload itself, uh, you put rc underscore reload equals no into the rc script. If it cannot, I don't know, start, <laughs> which would be stupid, <laughs> you put RC underscore start. Um, we have the RC user check variable. Um, as I mentioned earlier, check is the only action that does not require a higher privilege to be run. Uh, that is not true in some situation. Um, if I remember correctly, there is a couple of stuff like Samba, for example. I think we use SMB control, something like that, to check whether it's properly running or not. And that has to be run as root, in which case uh, we add this to the RCD script so that when you try to run it a reg regular user, it will tell you that uh, you cannot do that. So a little word about the, uh, the file that we put under the var run RCD RC script name. This file is used uh, to actually have the current status of the daemon that you want to manage. The reason is that RCD is uh, dynamic and real time, that means that if you, if, you, if you run a script with RCD, it will check real time in the process list. It will check the configuration as it is now and check the process, et cetera, et cetera. Let's say you want to change the flags of your process. You want to start NTPD with minus S, for example. Uh, so you were gonna edit etc RC conf local and set NTPD underscore flags equals minus S. And then you will try to restart NTPD, but of course, uh, RCD will try to match the process that has a minus S in it, when this process, of course, doesn't exist yet. So that's why we're storing all the information about the currently state of the daemon running uh, under that directory. It's not great, but... And here is a complete template of uh, everything that can be done with an RCD script. Um, I'm not going to review everything because we, we, we went there already, but we can see the three mandatory uh, variable. Just one thing I want to mention is that the daemon is, as I said, the path to the daemon that you want to start. But we now also um, force people to add the flags that demonize the daemon in it. So that if, if your daemon needs minus, minus D to demonize, if we put that in daemon flags instead of daemon, if you want to change the flags of the daemon, there is a good chance that you will forget uh, about putting back minus D. You will just think about putting back the new flags that you want to do to, to add. So it's, it's just a, a precaution. So that's basically the extent of uh, the RCD system. So at that point, we were quite happy with how things were working, um, but there were still one thing missing. Uh, at the time, we were using a lot of automation tools like Puppet and things like that. And while it was nice to tell Puppet to be able to run ETC, RCD, blah, blah, uh, there was no easy way to actually enable a daemon or disable a daemon or change its flags or whatever. Uh, so we needed a tool uh, that would handle that. Um, so I came up with a tool called RC Control. Uh, at first, it was meant to be an RC Conf local editor. Um, so RC control enabled blah, 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 would, would uh, actually uh, modify RC conf local uh, with the proper uh, configuration. Um, but it was so easy to actually uh, make it 
like the service command on, uh, on uh, Linux and FreeBSD and NetBSD, that you actually implemented that as well. So it can also handle your daemons using RC control, RC control restart, whatever. Um, so it's really, it's, it's like a, a big mix of the service command, the check config, and the sysconfig editor uh, that you have in uh, Red Hat land before system B. Um, it's an alternative, of course. You can still use VI or Emacs or whatever you want to uh, edit RC conf local. It's not mandatory to use this tool. Uh, it's just uh, it's just useful, and it's it's it, it was a must-have to uh, any automation tool or monitoring tool, uh, thing like that. Um, I also want to mention that the, we're not we're not service uh, the command service compatible in the way that we end up in. We, we don't do RC control SSHD start. We do RC control start SSHD. The reason is that I mentioned that at initially we all only wanted to be an RC conf local editor. Um, so um, before RC control, uh, user was still kind of confused. Um, because when you tell them, what well, they will ask you, how do I enable multicast on my machine? Well, you just put RC, in the RC conf local, multi multicast equals yes. Okay, that's easy, so for SSHD is the same. Oh, no, 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 SSHD is different because that's a, that's a daemon, so you, it's not how it works. You have to put SSHD underscore flags. Okay, so why can't I do multicast equals and nothing? That, that should also enable multicast. No, it's different, that, that's a service. So on and on it was kind of confusing. And RC control provide a unified interface for that. Uh, RC control enable multicast or RC control enable SSHD that will do the prexing and you don't have to worry about whether you need to append underscore flags or whatever. It's also useful because it, it, if, you, if you enable a, a, a script from external packages, it will also append it to the packet script variable to start it. So it provided us with a unified interface. Um, it was developed to abstract all these specific cases uh, that I mentioned. It also replaced a whole bunch of code in uh, Puppet, uh, Salt, and Ansible that were manually dealing uh, with RC conf local. Um, so you have an example here. Uh, that's what Jasper uh, at OpenBSD did for Puppet. Uh, he implemented the original RC conf local implementation, and when RC control uh, came up, then he was able to delete most of the code. Um, so it will abstract uh, all the stuff like daemon versus service. Uh, you don't need to care whether it's a daemon or a service. You don't need to care whether it's a meta script or a regular script or whatever. Um, while developing uh, RC control, um, there is something that looked very fragile to us at some point, is that RC control will source, uh, source rc.suber to get all the rcd functions that it needs. It will then run the rcd script, which will source rc.conf and rc.conf local, which, in, and then the rc script will also uh, resource rc.suber. So it, was, it looked like a bit of crazy sourcing. So what we did is that we implemented a function uh, called rcparseconf, which would basically parse the configuration uh, in rc.conf and rcconf local instead of sourcing. Some people were not happy about it because they were doing some crazy stuff uh, in rcconf local, namely putting shell, crazy shell code in there, uh, which it was not supposed, where you were not supposed to do that, but of course, uh, since we were sourcing, that worked perfectly for them. So, so we went from sourcing to parsing, and we introduced a small variable as well uh, to be able to only parse uh, for the RCD functions instead of parsing the entire framework uh, each time we need, to, uh, we need to have a function from rc.suber. Um, the way RC control uh, works is, uh, I think, pretty easy. Um, you give it the action that you want, and then you give it the, uh, the name of the service. So you can get service, you can get the service flags, you can get the entire service configuration, whether it's started, whether it's not started. Um, the second line is basically like uh, running the RCD script by yourself, like RC CTL start SSHD will in effect run ETC RCD SSHD start. Um, and you can, uh, you can order 
uh, daemon. This only works for package script daemon because all the base system daemon are hard coded sequentially in uh, etcrc. And you can get information uh, about what servers are stored at stop, et cetera, et cetera. So here you can see a few examples. Like you can enable three daemon at once if you want. Uh, I want to enable multicast message bus and cubs D. Uh, that's completely transparent. I want to change uh, the NTP NTPD flags. Uh, I want to restart three daemons at once. Uh, that's way more convenient than having to run three times a, a, a different script. Uh, you can have a list what are your, uh, your running um, daemon. And we also have a small um, command call called RC control ls failed, which will list the uh, daemon that are enabled in the configuration but that are not running. Uh, this is run every day by the daily script on OpenBSD. So it's not like a supervision system or whatever, but it can be useful from time to time to uh, make sure that all the daemon that are supposed to run are in fact running. So to conclude, um, RCD is really a compromise between uh, features and is abuse. Um, it's, I think, very simple. Uh, it's not suitable for all the crazy situation out there. It does has is a drawback for sure, uh, but it's okay. It was a design decision from the very beginning. So all the obvious deficiency were actually known from the very beginning. So it's not a replacement. It's not a process control framework. It's not a service supervisor. Uh, service supervisor are really fine. Uh, I actually use some of them, but only on specific, uh, daemon, only with specific demons. So yeah, it's a compromise. Um, I think we succeeded in making it broadly uh, simple and robust. Um, we preserved the original paradigm. Uh, all the old dudes were still happy with the way uh, thing worked. Uh, it's been built on decade-old component. We're just using like very basic tools, PKIL and uh, all the suite, SU. Um, we provided a consistent interface with uh, RC control. And it's also easy to integrate into other operating system. Uh, actually, we uh, came up with a small uh, homemade Linux distribution where we use the OpenBSD RCD uh, system in it. It worked just fine. Uh, I think there was just a couple of things to change because we're using KSH on OpenBSD and there's Bash on Linux and I think there's one or two substitutions that were not working with Bash, but that's, that's pretty much it. it. It worked out of the box. So that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. The problem is that if you store a PID then you have to end all the PID changing. Uh, and sometimes it's racy. Sometimes it can be racy. Uh, sometimes you have demons that restore themselves. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, that's, it's something that's on my to-do list, that has been on my to-do list for forever, basically. They're, that problem we want to be able to solve. Uh, it's just using PID is not the right answer for us. Uh, and I don't have the right answer yet. I'm still thinking about it. I had a few, I had a few ideas a, a few months ago, uh, which I talk about with my uh, fellow OpenBSD developers, but uh, I wanted to inject some stuff in the process list, but uh, as Bob Beck said, the uh, kernel is not a file system, so. Well, the, the problem is that if you do that, there, I mean, most daemons are super chatty. So you will, you will overflow your old console with messages that you don't want to have to see. So that's why it's not a default. It's easy to enable when you need it. Um, and if something doesn't start, then you, know, you, can, you can manually run with minus D and see, uh, and see why. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. At start, we will end up with a huge amount of uh, stuff. Uh, not by default. But there's no default base. 
Yeah, there, 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 are, there are a few stuff that, uh, that throw out. And yeah, but I remember that there was a few. Uh, maybe that changed since now, but uh, I remember there was a few. Uh, and actually, it doesn't. It does. It, I mean, the fact that it was super quiet on on startup was also a requirement because that's how the thing were done before. And we were actually telling whether uh, the RCD script uh, run okay or not. Uh, but we had to revert that uh, because people didn't like too much information. So yeah, uh, outputting the entire stuff on the console by default uh, will uh, just get screened at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if something doesn't, doesn't, doesn't start, then uh, it will tell you it failed. Yeah, but to be honest, most of the time when something doesn't start, it's slug in syslog. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that, that's, that's how you want those stuff, but the, Yeah, the, the, That, that was actually, uh, someone actually suggested that a few months ago. <clears throat> but actually the guy who suggested that didn't realize that his failure was logged in syslog. So redirecting to a file wasn't gonna help anything. Yes. So I, I Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention that. Uh, if, if in the uh, in the in the where do you put the dash exactly? Uh, so it'd be like RC ID, like my daemon dash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, because it's used as a variable, and yeah. if when you have a dash, then uh, you're around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I, f I forgot to mention it. Yeah. 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 
yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's actually uh, it's, it's documented in the man page. Yeah. No. Um, RC no, do you, hmm? RC control <laughs> <laughs> we, we could we could add a couple of checks. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could add a couple of checks, but uh, I, I mean, I don't think we'll be able to cover all the crazy stuff. So, what it, it already does a couple of stuff. It sorts your file. It removes some quotes where they're not needed, stuff like that. But uh, we don't want to do too much because again, it's shell. So parsing and all is already tricky. Or you can't have it all. I mean, it's it's super small, super simple. It's yeah. Okay, so we're done. Thank you.